We all love the Straw Hat Pirate. However, we all have favorites. And today I'm going to be telling you my top 5 favorite Straw Hat Pirates. But please tell me your top 5 in the comment section down below and tell me why. Learn your top 5. <laughs> Coming in at number 5 is Nico Robin. Now, if you had asked me pre-time skip, I would not have said Robin. I don't really know who I would have put at number 5, but I know it would not have been Robin. However, this Robin, post-time skip Robin, is amazing. I love the post-time skip Robin so damn much. Post-time skip Robin is amazing. She is funny. Her jokes are really funny. My, and her, especially her, like, um, morbid quotes, like, her mor morbid lines are really good. My personal favorite is, uh, if that, if, if we all got crushed by the ship, I wonder if the sea would turn red with our blood. I love it. I, I love Robin. She's so funny post-time kid. Like, she isn't funny all the time, but when Robin makes a joke, it is funny. And you can certainly see, especially in the Zoark, that Oda is really trying to give Robin more shine, make her funnier, make her better, the better character overall, make her have more of a role in the theory. Of course, there is the flaw where her, the Nami have the same one that she looks to, well, sexualized post-time skip. That is another video, but besides from that, she's over sexualized, which, as a guy, I won't complain about too much. I'll complain about it in another video, but she's good looking, she's fun, she's smart, she's kind, caring, and but she's also evil and she's badass. Robin is an assassin. A lot of people need to forget Robin is an assassin, so she can easily break your neck. She has a very cool devil fruit, and I, I love Robin. Robin's the boss. So yeah, Robin for number five. Coming in at number four is the third son of the Vine Folk family, Black Leg Sanji. Sanji is a badass, alright? There are so many things about Sanji that I love. One, Sanji gag is hilarious. I love it when Sanji fawns over women. I find it hilarious because you can tell the woman doesn't want it. He pretends to be a gentleman when he's really just a pervert and I love it. He, he, he's very chivalrous. Is chivalrous is a word? Still chivalrous. I'm not sure if that's a word, but you know, he's like chivalry. Chivalry is his thing. He's always there to protect the woman. Probably my favorite line is uh, the one he said when he uh, fought Virgo. He said, I sense a woman's tears. And as a man, it's my job to make them stop. I'm paraphrasing there, but you know what I mean. The line he said when he showed to fight Virgo and how it was his job as a man to make sure Tachiki or any woman never cried. I love that. He's really cool. I mean, his ability is to set his leg on fire. So you could say, if, if, so I, you could say I understand why some of the female fans of the theory say Sanji's hot. I'm a guy, I'm not gay, but I do see why the female fans say he's hot. Because his fire leg, huh? Huh? No? Bad joke? Okay. But really, I'm not gay, that was just a joke. But, moving on. Sanji's awesome, he's a great cook, for what I see. When I see Sanji cooking on screen, I actually get hungry myself, which I find funny. I mean, so he's a good cook, he's entertaining to look at, his gag is funny. And he's overall just a great character. He's loyal to Luffy. He stayed on an island filled with cross-dressers for two years just so he could get stronger and become a better cook to help Luffy in his journey to become the Pirate King. And that just said something about Sanji. Sanji for the freaking win. Coming in at number three is Zoro. Now, do I even need to say why Zoro is my third favorite straw hat? He's Zoro. He's a badass. He's epic. He cut... Uh, Monette in half with sheer intimidation. He did, he pretty much had the same effect on her as a, as a Conqueror talking user without using Conqueror talking. He's able to intimidate people in, to, in fear to the point where they'll, to the point where they will pass out without hockey. He's just that epic. He also took it all Luffy pain on Thriller Bark and it was just, it was so epic. How could you get any more epic than Zoro? I mean, really, with Zoro, it all boils down to how epic he is. And, of course, he does have a good personality. Zoro, funny. I mean, he, like, I love that we always get lost. I love that. I think it's a really good gag. And tying into my number four, 
slot with Sanji. Tiny's number four that, uh, I think his relationship with Sanji, how they always bicker. I think it's one of the highlights of the crew, and that, that's probably, like, my second favorite dynamic. It's not my favorite dynamic on the ship. I just, I love it. My number two, when it, my number one is a tie between Luffy and Nami, and Luffy and Usopp. I love all the Luffy interactions, but I'll explain why later. But I do honestly just have to say that Zoro is number three, just to, just for being Zoro. There is no other reason. He, Zoro, Zoro, so Zoro, Zoro, and Zoro's epic. That's the reason. Zoro's number three because he's epic. People are going to think I'm crazy for this, but coming in at number two is Cat Burglar Nami. Don't ask me why, but I've always liked it, Nami, from day one. It's not because she's good looking. Though Nami being hot is a plus. Nami is just amazing. She's funny. I love Nami gag because it can be worked in so many different ways. Like she's either freaking out over treasure that the enemy has, or she, or she putting her own friends in debt, in multitude of debt. But it's also a great gag because Nami can drop her gag and forget about it for her crewmates at times. And when she does, it's very meaningful. Like, I remember Luffy was reluctant to give Buggy the bracelet Nami gave him. Even, even though he, it was his chance to stay at eight, he was still reluctant to do it because no, it was treasure given to him by Nami. And he knows how important treasure is to her. I mean, even Luffy knows that. And it, it's amazing to me. It just, did that thing, I think most people thought it was a comedy thing. I thought that was a really sweet thing. A really good scene of just representing the friendship between members of the Straw Hat Pirate when L Nami just went over to Luffy and just gave him some treasure. I, was like, that, I thought that was a great moment. Nami is also, in my opinion, probably the third most loyal Straw Hat. I feel like she is the third person that is the most loyal to Luffy. Only because she in Straw World, even though the canonization of that movie is debatable, I don't think it's canon. I actually I'm sure it is in canon. I did a video on it. I'll link that in the description. But, you know, some people think it's canon, but I want to point it out in Straw World, Nami gave herself up and gave up her dream for Luffy. I mean, she begged. She, she pretty much humiliated herself when she was on Weteria, but when she broke down in tears and pretended to cry like some kind of dandel in distress, she just so she could get out of there because she wanted to help Luffy that much. And I, I love it. I love Nami. Nami's also very funny. She, she's caring, but she's a bitch. That's what I like the most. Nami's a caring bitch, and I, I really like that. Uh, kind of like with Zoro, I love Nami. Because she's Nami. I love, a lot of these characters, I love them because they are who they are. But, I'm a very stereotypical guy, so I'm pretty sure you can guess what number one is. Coming in at number one is Monkey D. Luffy. Now, I know it's kind of stereotypical to pick the main character, but I just love Luffy. Because I love the idea of being free to do whatever you want and always protecting your friends. Luffy is just, he, I find him to be such an inspiration, that he does whatever he wants, but he also has this incredibly strong desire to protect his friend. And while he doesn't obey any rules, he still normally does the right thing, and he's selfish, but he's not so selfish that he's an asshole, but he's still selfish, in a way that he's happy, but he doesn't upset those around him. And I really like Luffy, because he's also very likable, I like how carefree he is. I, I'm a lot like Luffy, and especially since I started w watching One Piece, I try to be even more like him. Which is, I try to be pretty carefree. Like, even if I get in trouble at home, or whatever happens in life, I'm kind of like, oh, oh, who cares? It's in the past. I've said that to people that, you know, have had, like, problems with me before. There was a girl at school, she got annoyed at me once. And when she, later on, when she said, she said, sorry later, you know what I said to her? I said, who, I don't care, it's in the past. I already forgave you, I could care less. Like, I love that about Luffy. He has, he, he has, he looked at you and he just like, okay, it's in the past. Like, he doesn't care about, he doesn't care about the past. He, and he only cares about that moment, and if it's in the past, it's in the past. What you have done in the past to him, or to his friends, or in, what you have done in general is irrelevant to him. All he cares about is you in that moment, and who you are, and whether or not he wants you to be his friend, 
and he's always making friends, and he wants everybody to be friends. He just, he's just, he's what I wish I was like, and what I try to be like. But yeah, that is why Luffy is my number one. But those are my top five favorite Straw Hat Pirates. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Tell me your top five in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed the video, leave it a like. And remember guys, to subscribe for more videos. And above all else, guys, have a great day. This is One Piece Nation, signing out. Peace.